As far as uh, setting up the cross vent to use uh, with the jet, there are a couple of little nuances that you have to be aware of. And it's, it's pretty much true with any vent that you use with the jet, that, that high frequency jet ventilation at a rate of 420 breaths a minute kind of plays havoc. But the cross vent actually does work better than most as far as uh, alarms and that kind of thing. So again, you're using it in the constant flow mode. If you need any further detail about the screen and the, and the knobs and everything, you can refer to the other videos that we have on our website. Uh, to get the basics, but I'm going to just kind of talk about using it in specifically with the jet because <clears throat> you do things just a little different. You're going to use it in constant flow. Normally with ventilation, we use it when the flow trigger. So we'll have constant flow on. When you first, probably most of the time that you set up the, the CrossFit with the jet, you're probably going to start in CPAP mode just because typically the nature of what drives you to put a kit on the high frequency vent in the first place, you, you want to limit the amount of conventional breaths you give. But uh, just for the sake of uh, ease, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to set it up with the, with the rate first. So I've got my rate dialed to 30, but typically you might do a rate of two to five when you're on the jet. But since we set the PIP by looking at the peak pressure here, and adjusting our knob, I'm gonna go ahead and dial my rate to 30 so that I can see this cycle several times, get it adjusted, and then I can dial my rate down. So I'll set my eye time. Um, so if I start the jet here, So we already set our peak pressure here. We set our rate. I'll just set it at five for now. Um, as far as setting your peak on the jet, you're basically using this vent to set what you want up here. So the nice thing about it, the cross vent is that it has an infinite adjustment for peak so that you can really dial that peep exactly what you want. Sometimes when you use a conventional vent, it may have a peep setting of seven or, or eight. So sometimes seven gets you seven and a half here, you know, or eight gets you eight and a half. So you have to make a decision. If the order is for seven, you can dial this directly where you need it to be. But if you noticed on the bar graph here, you see how the bar graph is kind of bouncing because you see that jet pulsing so and what happens is this peep number number value gets updated uh, when these conventional breaths happen so right now it's saying five and we got 5.8 almost six up here so the best way to look at this peep and you, it'll be really important when we go to CPAP if you notice I got a notch at five and then I got a little notch at seven and a half. So what I'm gonna try to do without watching here is set my peep at seven and a half. And the way to set it is if you see that bar graph bouncing green and it's solid green up to a point and then it bounces above that point, that lowest point is really where our setting is. So. What I'm trying to do is set that bottom of the bounce just right at seven and a half to see if I can set my peak to seven and a half. And if I look right now here, 7.6. So just keep that in mind. Now see this says six here. If I'm looking at this number and I'm trying to adjust it up here, you're always going to be chasing and going back and forth. So always kind of look at the bar graph, look at the bottom of that bounce, and then set it accordingly. Now, as far as alarms on the cross vent, normally the peak pressure alarm is probably your main alarm because if you have a rate of 30 or 40, this thing's going to, if you get a disconnect, this is going to happen an alarm pretty quickly. But Probably the most important alarm is uh, the low peep alarm. So right now, for instance, if I get a disconnect, 
See how it's not alarming because it's got to wait for those breaths to happen. Well, that's why we want to set our, let's see. We want to set our low peep, make sure we set this above zero because if you get a disconnect, you want to be notified right away. If you notice what's happening, I reconnected and my peep is right back where it's supposed to be. But the problem is this numeric display doesn't get adjusted until two breaths, conventional breaths happen. What happens if you get a disconnect again, and you have to reconnect rather than wait for those breaths to happen you hit alarm quiet if you just switch it to CPAP and switch it back you force a number down here so you won't have to wait for those two breaths to happen now if you notice if you look at your peak pressure here and you look at the bar graph see how that breath happened and it came up to 20 but it's still showing 10 up here you got to wait for that second breath to happen before you see this value up here and there it was now I've got 22 so again think that two breath thing always wait for those two breaths for this bar, uh, numerical display on the bar graph to, to show you where it's at the bar graph does show it correctly just like our peep shows immediately when we're reconnected just have to wait for that second breath here and up here. If you're gonna have the baby in CPAP, all you have to do is switch it to CPAP. Now, if you notice, before we said don't worry about the, the bottom number because you can't really set the peep according to that. Well, you definitely can't set it now because this peep is constant, CPAP number is constantly changing see a seven eight nine ten in there but again if you just focus on the bar graph you know adjust it accordingly you can always set that peep exactly where you need to, to set it now if you get a disconnect in this situation get your alarm when you reconnect it immediately uh, goes away you don't have to worry about the two breath thing of course you wouldn't have any breath now Let's take a, take a scenario. Normally, let's just say, if I'm gonna set the vent to CPAP, I'm not setting a rate. So do I need to worry about setting my rate? I guess not. So let's just say, for instance, that I just left my rate set at 40, because I don't need to worry about it, I'm gonna be in CPAP. Um, Technically, you'd think you wouldn't need to set your peak pressure either. Um, but the problem is, well, I'll show you why you probably do want to set that. So, again, you're in CPAP, so why do I need a pressure? So let's take a scenario here. Let's say uh, we put the baby on CPAP first without a rate on the cross vent for three days, and now we need to recruit some lung volume, so we decide we're going to add a rate of three say to the crossman well I don't know what it's set to so I'm gonna switch it and it's set at 40 so now I'm gonna try to hurry up and turn it down as fast as I can in the meantime I just gave about three or four breaths before I could get it down there so what I would suggest that you do <clears throat> is go ahead and you know if you're gonna be on the jet and you set it for CPAP Go ahead and take the rate down to say five. So you're in the range of where you're probably gonna end up going to a rate if you go there. So that way, when you do make the switch, you're at five, I can easily get to three, no problem. The other thing is when we set it, the vent up before without a patient, I can dial my rate to set my PIP I can dial the rate to 30 or 40 and I can get this thing cycling. When I switch from CPAP, I don't have that luxury. So 
it makes sense that I probably have this pip set somewhere in the range. You don't know exactly where you're gonna decide to go, but most of you have some idea about where you may wanna be. You, you probably wouldn't have it jacked up to 40. So if I set it, say, to 20, then at least, and I put this notification, then everybody knows that, hey, the rate is set at five and the pip is set at 20, so that when I make this switch, all I need to do is make a finer, final uh, fine adjustment here. Remember, you gotta wait for the second breath. Actually, let me change that to five so I don't have to wait so long. You gotta wait for that second breath to happen before you can see where your pip is. But then once you, once you do, you can make fine adjustments with your uh, max pressure knob or um, to set your peak pressure. Now there's another reason why you really want to set your peak pressure. Because again, let's go back to CPAP. Let's say I'm in CPAP and all of a sudden I'm on the jet, things are fine, and then my baby's sat in 30%. You know, what am I going to do? I got two choices. I got to take them off, you know, use a manual resuscitator and give them some breaths, or what I could do is there is a manual breath right here. So if I touch this button, it's going to give a breath at whatever the pip is set to. So sometimes this is all you need to do is maybe give the baby a couple of breaths. That way they're controlled. They're at a certain set pressure, but you want to make sure you know what that pressure is. So in this case, I know every time I touch that button, it gives them a breath at whatever those settings were and right here I see that it's pip of 20. Uh, same thing can happen um, let's say you're in uh, have a conventional rate of 5 and all of a sudden you're sat in 30 well maybe you want to just give a couple of extra breaths rather than take them off and you know run the risk of you know bagging too hard so there is a manual breath but it's in the CPAP mode so what I have to do is I have to switch to this mode give a breath maybe give another breath and then you got to make sure you switch back to CMV so anyway that's why we add this uh, this designation right up here so we everybody knows where you're at um, one other thing I wanted to mention, uh, when you're in CPAP mode, there is a, one other way that you might choose to set that um, PEEP level. Um, some people may not want to do this, but if you put the, vent, the jet vent in standby and wait till this settles, then you can dial that PEEP in and then push enter. You know, it's just one way around it. A lot of times people don't like it because now you're going to end up resetting these alarms around uh, mean airway pressure and servo pressure and you know but it is another option so that you don't have to kind of look at that that bar graph there's also one other option let's just say our fellow RT neglected to put that pip number on there and lo and behold I need to give this baby a breath what I could do is I could set my high peak pressure alarm what I'm going to do I know that my pip is above 20 so let's just say I wanted to make sure I didn't go above 18 if I set my high peak pressure alarm at 18 and now I give a manual breath you hear that beep it's basically hitting that high peak pressure alarm. So even though, because I have no idea where somebody set the pip, I know that since it hit that high peak pressure alarm and I adjusted that to 18, I know that I didn't give a breath higher than 18. So it's just another way that you can be sure if uh, your coworkers let you down and didn't you know, put up these numbers for you to follow. One other thing, there's one other advantage to potentially using the cross vent with the jet. Um, since the cross vent can do flow triggering with the flow sensor in line, uh, let's say when it comes time to put the patient in uh, 
standby on the jet, we can actually uh, put the flow sensor in line, dial our rate up, and then switch it to flow triggering and and that way let the baby um, you know have a trial triggering an event so that we can see if they're going to make it without the jet before we move the ICU vent in place that way we can discontinue all of this and bring the ICU vent so that's just another advantage of using the cross vent. For more products and information, please visit our website at www.biomeddevices.com.